right, so we've got Jack here from McCurdy Training. Um, he is my coach. Um, we've got on to you, Jack, at about, oh, about eight weeks ago. Um, hit you up, McCurdy Training, and and um, they obviously recommended you to be my coach for the sub five-minute mile. Again, thanks for jumping on. Um, you're all the way in Arizona, so yeah, I do appreciate you taking the time. Um so I thought it'd be good to get you on and, and give our audience and everyone a bit of an update on, I guess, how we're how you're programming exactly what I'm doing. And I guess if anyone else out there is looking at to PB their, I mean, mile, 10K, 5K, half marathon, marathon, um, to to get in touch with you guys um, and to, to get a program. I've been really happy with where, I mean, what I've been getting from from the service. It's um It's been amazing. So... Um, big hats off to you and McCurdy Training. So if you can, give us a bit of a background on, I guess, your running history and how you got involved with with McCurdy Training and what, what, like, what, who you coach now and what, what, you, um, what you love to do. Yeah. So I've been a runner since I was like 13, 14 years old, right? So I guess that's 15 years ago, right? Um, at this point, I've been running more than I have it in my life. Um, started when I was in middle school and then uh, showed a lot of, you know, early promise, ran well in high school, was a state champ there, um, went to uh, college and was uh, on the track and field and cross country at Loyola Marymount University, which is in Los Angeles. Um, and I was the school record holder there in 2918 in the 10 K and 14 flat for the 5 K. Um, and while I was there, I actually met my, my wife, uh, Danielle Polarecki. We just got married in September. Um, and yeah, so we were both on the, the running and the, the cross country team and she, got a pro running job out in Flagstaff, Arizona. Um, so after college, I followed her out here. And while we're out here is where I met James McCurdy. He's, uh, you know, not only uh, my boss, he was, he's also my coach and he, uh, you know, is one of the coolest people I've ever met. Um, so I got to know him, started training under him. And then after training under him for a while, he hired me on as a coach and now I've been coaching under the McCurdy trained umbrella for about uh, five years now. So when, when you say your wife's a, um, a pro coach, what does that, what does that mean? Yeah. So <laughs> my, she is, I'm a good runner. She's a great, runner, right? Like she is a really, really talented, you know, she's ran, um, 15, 12 in the 5k, she's ran 30, 31, 22 in the 10k. Like she's very legit. Um, and when she came out here, she was originally training with a team called, um, Northern Arizona elite. They're a team sponsored by Hoka and she trained with them and had some good success with them for several years. Um, and then after several years, we decided to make the switch and she currently joined the McCurdy pro team. Um, and I am currently training her and several other women, um, on the team. So I'm the associate head coach of the McCurdy pro team and I focus solely on the women. So I know you said before, a lot of the uh, pro teams will come out to Arizona. I know I said a lot of AFL teams, mm -hmm. I guess, for the, um, altitude sort of training. So what, um, in regards to that, what, what the pro teams, you mean like the, the people like Olympic level coming out there to train, like what, what do you mean by that? Yeah, yeah. So, so you know, um, definitely, you know, a decent amount of Olympians, especially for, you know, anywhere for the events, 1500 meters up to the marathon, right? Um, and then also just people who, you know, maybe aren't quite at the Olympic level yet, but are training to get there sort of thing. So, you know, anybody who's kind of competing post-collegiately, who often has sponsorships by shoe companies, um, they might train for road races or on the track. Um, and yeah, of, you know, the, what determines what a pro runner is, is kind of a loose term, but usually involves sponsorships and making money and, you know, um, that sort of thing. Yeah. Very nice. Um, so mm -hmm. do you specialize in any sort of any event or is it more a general 
do you know what I mean, from anywhere from a mile to sort of a marathon, or do you sort of have a specialty of shorter or longer? Uh, for me, my, my personal running or for Yeah. what I coach? Well, both, both. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So I, <laughs> I generally, the longer the better for me, right? So like when I was in college, I did the longest events possible, the 5K and the 10K. Once I graduated college, I've focused mostly on like the half and full marathon. Yeah, very nice, very nice. In And terms then for coaching, I'll coach anywhere from the mile to the marathon for sure. of how many people have you currently got on like is it like for me, like it's an online um coaching? Yeah, so at the moment, it's somewhere between 40 and 50 people online. Um, I think around 45 or so. Um, and then uh, I have about four or five pros that I coach in town as well. Well, that'll keep you busy. That'll keep you busy. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so let's talk about, um, I guess, my preparation. I, I come to you and I said I wanted to run a sub five-minute mile. We didn't really Mm – I -hmm. sort of gave you a gauge, and I it's probably not done correctly, but I gave you a gauge of probably where I was at um, for, for a test for a mile. You were usually, I'd say, um, I presume that you would normally run a mile to see where you're at. Um, so I sort of gave you that test, but then you probably figured out, or we did sort of figure out over the first cut, sort of three weeks where I was at anyway with the paces. Um, so the different types of runs, can you take me through like the different types of runs that you structure for the sub five and a mile, I guess 1.6 K and I guess how it, does that differ too much for a five, 10 half full, or is it pretty much the same? Just the volume maybe gets up a bit more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, first off, each event is trained for a little bit differently. Obviously, the way you train for a mile and the way you train for a marathon are very different. But the way you train for a mile and the way you train for a 5K might be a little bit closer. You know, obviously, the closer they are in distance, the more similar they are in training. Um, but there are definitely some concepts that are universally applied to all of them. Um, you know, for almost everything you train for, you'll incorporate some easy runs, right? Um, easy runs should be exactly that. They should feel pretty darn easy. You should be able to have a conversation with them. You know, your heart rate shouldn't get very high. Um, and these are kind of the good base building, build your aerobic system um, runs that, you know, pretty much all runners should include no matter what they're training for. Um, and so for you, you know, you do generally two easy runs per week, often the days before your, your harder workouts. Um, the next thing that we kind of include for most people is a longer run, uh, usually on the weekends. Um Now, this can be very quite a bit, right? You know, for you, we're only getting up to, you know, I think around 15K or so, right? But if we were training for a marathon, we would probably want to get that up to obviously 30 to 40K sort of thing. Um, but we just don't need to get that long if we're just training for a mile. Um, but this definitely kind of helps your musculoskeletal system kind of get used to the the day-to-day -day hammering Um that is required kind of to train for running. Um, and then kind of the most important things, if you're really wanting to see how fast you can get are the workouts, right? And obviously every run is a workout, but when we, when I use the phrase a workout that generally refers to something like a tempo run or an interval session or something that is faster than easy running in some sense, right? Um, and for you, we've been doing, two workouts per week, you know, and these are generally spaced out. So you have enough time to recover between them. Um, one of the workouts is a little more endurance focused, right? Um, even the mile is 60% aerobic. So you definitely still need a pretty heavy endurance component for a mile training. And then the other workout is generally something faster, working more on your, your speed and your strength, Um, working more on your kind of VO2 max and that sort of thing. Um, and generally we do those on Fridays. Um, and so those are definitely for the mile, some of the most important sessions where if you're training for the marathon, you don't really need that speed and that VO2 work in the same way that you would for what you're training for. Yeah. Yeah. I think one of the biggest things that I've sort of learned, I think 
Jim, I didn't know this for a long period of time, is that, that how important the mm -hmm. easy runs are and that there's so many mm -hmm. still probably that run and, and, and oh, I mean, take, take me back probably two years ago, if I went out for a run, it would be I'd go out for a run and I'd and I'd and I'd run every like if even if I was doing a five or ten k run without following a program, I would just mm -hmm. go sort of as hard as I could. And then um, it would no, there was no ever an easy run. There was no I just get back and I sort of and and I, and I see this all the time of people. And then you and then mm -hmm. more educated I've got and the the better coaching that I've received, it's like okay. And and the the more research that I've done of how important those easy runs are. To build the volume, mm -hmm. um, yeah. But it's funny when when you stop running for a period of time and then you get back into the easy runs. Mm -hmm. How hard, like, do you mm -hmm. know what I mean, when, when we were training for the Sydney to Melbourne run, um, which do you know what I mean, it was a hundred k's a day for six days. We end up doing and then uh, stuff like that. The the easy runs were, do you know what I mean, getting up to sort of 30, 40, and they were fine. But now eight k's, it feels a lot mm -hmm. more because I started back after. <laughs> Yes. They they feel like thirty or forty, and um, but I guess mm -hmm. people need to understand that. And this is I sort of had a conversation with you one day about the pace of what the V dot said in my program for the easy run. I think it had like four forty to mm -hmm. five oh five, where my mm -hmm. easy run for the whole time previous to that would have been probably a, a five to a five thirty, as in terms of heart rate um, mm -hmm. and feeling as though it's an easy run um and mm -hmm. so in terms of is, is it just purely going off how you feel and and breath and um being able to talk or is it is it also pushing a little bit with those easy runs um well i would say that what the app gives you is generally what the faster end of I, what i want you doing easy runs but if you were to run slower and you had days, especially, you know, after a workout where you're feeling really tired and, you know, the past six days have been pretty tough on you, you know, you've gotten three hard sessions in and that sort of thing, you can absolutely run slower. And there's a lot of studies that show that, you know, you're going to get the same effects, whether you're running a little bit faster or a little bit slower, and it can often be easier on your body to go a little bit slower. So, um, you know, and the more you run, the slower you probably should run, right? Like I, that seems to sometimes a little bit counterproductive, but if you're trying to stack on more volume, you know, you can't get away with, you know, pushing your easy runs as much. So, you know, if you're training for the mile, pushing some of your easy runs might be okay. You might get away with it. If you're trying to run, you know, a hundred K a week sort of thing, you might want to slow it down a little bit more. Yeah, uh, our program fast forwarding a, a few weeks. Will that stay always be at two poly workouts, or will that change? Sorry, say that again. Uh, the quality workouts so that we do two at the moment, interval or like a long threshold. Mm -hmm. the, other, the other ones are easy. Will that stay two per week the whole way through, or will that change to three or one? How does that work? Um, so as for as long as we do mile training. Right. It'll generally stay that way, at least until we start really testing, you know, the week of, uh, you know, when we try to run the really fast mile. Right. We'll probably just do one lighter workout that week and yep. then the the um, race itself sort of thing. But in general, two workouts per week is pretty standard and that's pretty standard for a lot of people, you know, um, even pros, a lot of times we're only working out two times per week. I'd say at most, usually three to four. And if we're working out three to four, that's often requires a double day session, which is something that 99% of people <laughs> do not need to do. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll generally stick with the Tuesday, Friday, you know, yeah. um, endurance and speed, but as we kind of get closer and closer to, the the race day you know the endurance side will definitely come down a little bit and the speedier stuff will definitely be the uh what takes precedence in your training yep so looking at those two quality sessions the interval one at the track the speed session i've been feeling quite good and and and, and um it mm -hmm. probably helps when you run with other people with that session so um mm -hmm. i've been hitting the numbers quite well where the other session the threshold sort of run has really pushed me um mm -hmm. like i'm sort mm -hmm. of hang on like or even 
on Tuesdays, like I was like two seconds off, um, a couple of the couple of the splits. Um, so how mm -hmm. is there one more important than the other, or is it like, geez, or is it, it does one become more of a concerning issue if, if you if you're struggling in one one of those? Yeah, I mean, part of the reason that is is just naturally the athlete you are, right? Like you are a guy who's been. You know, you know, is obviously very, very strong and have been hitting the gym for a long time and have developed probably a lot of like really good fast twitch fibers, right? Like you're, you know, I, you, you do have a, a, an aerobic background as well, which has made this a lot easier, but you know, your primary focus most of your life has probably been more gym stuff. Is that same yeah, to yeah. say? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So that translates a lot easier over to sprinting and the faster end stuff, right? Um, and so it's very normal, especially for a lot of my athletes who are, are men and have been lifting for a long time and are trying to get into more of the running side of things that they will have that natural speed. Like you can run fast 200s much quicker than like what the app says you should and that sort of thing. Um, but then, you know, it, like most things in life, you want to play to your strengths and work on your weaknesses. Right. And so, you know, we know for you that the limiting factor probably isn't going to be your speed for the mile. It's probably going to be your endurance. So, you know, we've definitely, especially the first six to eight weeks, really put a focus on trying to develop your endurance as much as possible. And if we can kind of catch that up a little bit, I think that's what's going to really allow you to, to crush the mile in another three to four weeks. Yeah. yeah. Um, what would you consider be like, I've heard this terminology a couple of times, like the, that it's harder to run the sub five minute mile than it is the, the sub three hour marathon. What, what, what are your thoughts on that? Mm -hmm. um, I would say yes. Like probably more of the population, the general population could break the three hour marathon if they trained quicker than they could break the, the five minute mile. Um, but that's not the case for everybody. And I think you would, would be like the perfect example of someone. I think it'd be, quicker for you. And hopefully this is true. Hopefully we're breaking the five minute mile in a few weeks for you to break the five minute mile, then break the three hour of the marathon. But I think you are absolutely capable of doing both. Um, and, you know, especially if you're younger and you haven't been running as long, a five minute mile might be easier, but if you're, you know, a little bit older and you have been running a long time and you've focused on the aerobic base, that would probably be the easier thing to accomplish. Is there a um? Is there a key thing that you look for as a coach before mm -hmm. attempt the sub five minute mile that you go, oh, I'm confident? Or like, is there a is there a session or is there a a metric that you see or or something you go, oh, he, okay, so he's crushed that. Like, okay, I'm 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 going here pretty confident. Yeah. So, you know, something that we're going to do next week, and I don't know if you've already looked at your, your calendar, right? Oh, is we're going to do, a, <laughs> we're going to do a, a time trial, right? But we're going to do 800 meters. Um, and this will kind of help us tell, you know, if you're on track to kind of be running, um, you know, sub five minutes in the mile about three to four weeks after that. Um and so obviously if we're not breaking, <laughs> you know, five minute pace for 800 meters, that's not a great sign, but I think you're going to do that pretty handedly. Um, ideally we'd be running closer to, you know, 440 pace or faster for this 800 meters. And that'll be a good gauge if we're ready to run a mile under five minutes. So what, um, is that, that's next week? Yes. Yes. Is that um is that an all out effort? Yes, that will be an all out effort. Yeah. yeah. And then you'll we're also gonna do like we're gonna wait about 10 minutes after that and then get in some two hundreds just to kind of uh, squeeze uh some more juice out of you after that as get a good workout in as well. That's so an eight hundred meters at a three oh one pace, two twenty five, and then mm -hmm. yeah, nice. Yeah, very good. Again, I tried. Yeah, to I just put something in there, but if you can run faster than you know two twenty five, uh, ideally we'd be shooting for closer to two twenty. But well, yeah. you know, the nice thing about these, you know, pre goal race sort of workouts is like it gives us, you know, it just tells us where we're at, right? We're not trying to force anything. We're not going to be like, 
oh, if you're on 226, you're a failure or anything like that. It's just like, uh, all right, here's where we're at. And here's what we got to do to get you to where your goals are. Yeah, nice. Well, it's funny because um, I was actually going to speak to you because 2XU have hit us up to um, to to try and beat the sub, uh, the half marathon record, which is, uh, you probably know, I think it's like 50 something minutes. Um in a team yeah, of four, around fifty-eight minutes. Yeah, so it's two forty-five pace in a team of four. So they've they've hit me up and said, "Can I find three other people to try and and do?" So we're doing it in four hundred meter efforts. So like literally, do you know what Oof. I mean? So the, the, it was funny when the, when when he first suggested it to me. He goes, "Oh yeah, can can um just do thirteen laps straight at uh and then mm -hmm. the next person go." And I'm like. That ain't gonna happen. I, I don't know anyone that can run two forty five for for thirteen laps. <laughs> um, so I said, oh, I reckon we could we could try and attempt it going one lap at a time, literally like a relay style, like one mm -hmm. lap just fucking balls out, and the next person goes. So we're attempting that um, in, in a team of four. So that will maybe I could do what I can do the first effort, run eight hundred balls out, and try and um, and then we go from there. But um, yeah. So okay. So that that's that's the session that will will give you a good indication then. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good session. Um, but you know, all the other workouts um, are helpful as well. You know, like if you're if we're starting to get your threshold pace down to um, you know closer to like three forty five to three fifty, that's a pretty good indicator that you're ready. You know, you're hitting a lot of your workouts faster than your goal mile pace. That's a good indicator you're you're, you're getting ready. Um, you know, all of your paces have gotten faster and faster as we've gone along these past eight weeks, which is a good sign. Um, but yeah, you know, at, at the end of the day, you know, the best way to tell if you're how fast you can run a mile is just by running a mile. So, um, you know, ideally we'll crush it on our first go. Um, but you know, a lot of the times, you know, when I, you know, ran 14 flat 5k in college, that wasn't my first race of the season, right? I had ran four or five races and then I ran my goal time sort of thing. So hopefully, you know, we can just, you know, hit 458 and be done with it. But there's a good chance you might, we might need like a few rust busters is what we call them as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, good. In terms of um, like running biomechanics, um, how much mm -hmm. is that playing? And I don't know if you've seen any of the footage of me running or – or what what you can see that would be the big improvements that I need. Like I've been trying to watch some runners as well. I do a bit of, do you know what I mean? As everyone does, watch how the, the, the best runners around the world run. And I seem to be nowhere near that mm -hmm. in terms of my arms and my, my foot. And I'm always trying to think of ways to get better. What what do you see as one of the major things that um, people need to focus on when they're running? Yeah. Um... Well, there's first off, I want to say your form is pretty darn good. Like I, I saw your form was like, dang, I'm I'm pretty impressed, right? Uh honestly, your form might be better than mine. Like I've been told I do not have the sexiest form in the world, and that's for sure. Um, but yes, it does help to have a good form. It's not the most important thing in the world, right? You might see some people running the marathon. And their their form looks ugly as hell, but they're running you know sub five minute pace for a marathon sort of thing, right? Um, but it's always something that you know even at the pro level we're we're always working on. Um, you know, for you, I think you you're very upright and you could be leaning forward just a little bit more. You could have a little bit um, more open arm swing, but it's being very nitpicky. Um, but for most people, right, like, I think, you know, they need to learn to relax their shoulders. You know, a lot of times bad form in the lower body comes from the upper body and how their arms are swinging and how much they're crossing over and wasting energy and that sort of thing. Um, so just kind of be cognizant of what you're doing with your arms, you know, making sure that they're not flailing all over the place, uh, making sure that you're kind of leaning forward a little bit, that you're... You're not overextending your stride a little bit. You know, you have a quicker cadence and that sort of thing. But the best way to improve those things is both from just simply running and running more, running fast. You know, I have you do those strides, especially before workouts. That's great for your biomechanics. That's great for your form. 
and then doing just like some drills, you know, A skips, B skips, those sorts of things. Um, and there's a lot of really great YouTube videos out there if you just type in running drills and that can be really helpful for, you know, learning your knee drive and learning good, you know, getting your feet underneath you and getting good arm carriage and all that good uh, biomechanical stuff. Well, what about footwear? So I, the, well, I did train for the, the mile um, before Christmas or before um, November last year. And then I think I told you I wore spikes for the first time the week of, it was like the Tuesday <laughs> of, and I was going to do it on the Friday and then went to Bali with all our staff on the Saturday. So it was my like, you know I mean, so and I wore it on the Tuesday and I honestly, and it was a, it was a track session. Um, uh, I can't remember what sort mm -hmm. of session it was, but I, I couldn't walk for two weeks. Like, honestly, I, I was in, like my, my calves were just, like I thought I'd torn both of them. And um, so then I haven't worn them ever again because I, I didn't end up attempting the mile because I couldn't walk for two weeks and I was in Bali and that sort of stuff. So what um, mm -hmm. do you suggest wearing spikes? Do you suggest like getting them back on and, and reintroducing them at some sort of level or as how much quicker back like, is that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think spikes are awesome, right? Yeah. Um, well, first off, like kind of a summary of the different shoes that are out there, right? You have your general, just normal running shoes, easy trainers, that sort of thing, right? They often have a lot of cushion. They're great for your your easy runs and your long runs sort of thing. Um, and then you have flats, right? And I'm probably sure you've seen those like Nike super shoes that have the really huge cushion and that sort of thing. And those are what most like pro runners do use for their their workouts and their their races right um and then spikes are most people won't use spikes because most people don't do track races uh, on the gen in the general population yeah. right most people are training road 5ks and road marathons so they only wear uh, uh trainers and they'll only wear flats so spikes is only for if you're running on the track um and they're aggressive right like if you like you said, don't use them at all and then wear them for a race. Yeah, your calves are going to feel like shit afterwards for sure. Um, but if you kind of, you know, get used to them, maybe start just wearing them for a few strides at first and then you start wearing them for a couple workouts, then, you know, once you're kind of, you know, especially your lower legs adapt, um, they can be very helpful. They're very lightweight. They have good grip on the track and will help you go faster. So, you know, for you, I'd recommend, yeah, let's first use them on the track for just strides first, you know, six by 20 second sprints, kind of get used to them there. After you do that a couple of times, then try them for a couple of your workouts, especially your speedier workouts. And then once you get a couple of workouts in them and they still feel good and they're not wrecking your calves, then you would use them for a race. Um, but if you don't have spikes, you know, flats still work well on the, the track, right? So you could definitely wear a pair of super shoes on the track and those would work just as well. Is, is there a certain, like, is there a certain percentage or is there a certain time, like, it would that they say it would take off to a couple of seconds or, or anything like that or not really? Between, like, like general, just easy trainers for spikes, oh, like, sort of thing. Like, because I've got like the Mizuno or the um, Sacconi, um Super, mm -hmm. the the um, Rebellion Pros, which are quite aggressive and um, mm -hmm. push of wear. Like if I compared them on the track to, because when I ran that day, I was flying. Like it was, mm -hmm. my, my times were. I was like, oh, it's one of my um people that work with me said, get spikes. I'm doing mean, into mile. You run so much faster. And I, on the day, I felt amazing. I just could not walk for literally two and a half weeks after. Um, and I nearly chucked them out in the bench straight away. So, um, so they're they're still there. So I I think you're right. I think what I might do is try and reintroduce them on the race day. If I could get them, if I could get it um, reintroduced enough over the sort of the next four weeks, five weeks, would you suggest wearing them on mm -hmm. on race day? Yeah, yeah, I think that wouldn't be a bad idea. Um, you know, I I think especially because you already have spikes um, and you haven't like completely thrown them away, I think they would be a, a good idea to get used to over the next four weeks and then ideally use them for a race. And we can definitely talk more, you know, very specific workouts. When should we do it? When should we not do it? Um, 
But for most people, I would say, you know, get your easy running trainers and then just get a pair of flats and you can use the flats on the track. If you, even if you are deciding to do something for like a mile, um, uh, you know, there's really great, the vapor flies, the Nike vapor flies or the Nike alpha flies, or, you know, the Adidas audios pros, or, you know, pretty much every shoe company makes a good pair of, you know, racing shoes. So I recommend that's kind of what you would want to invest your money in rather than spikes, unless you're like a high school, you know, track runner and that sort of thing. Yep. Yep. Recovery wise. Um, do you have anything that you suggest to the athletes or, um, yeah. Uh, sleep <laughs> like, like for shoes or for just uh, like general recovery uh, stuff. General. So yeah. Like ice baths or recovery boost sleep. Definitely. Um, yeah. So number one is sleep, 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 sleep. sleep. Like I, I, call, I would say like at a, bare minimum you need seven plus hours of sleep eight to nine would be much better right you know you can take all the ice baths in the world and roll out you know three hours a day but it doesn't mean shit if you're not sleeping right you know i think especially you know uh, on the both the pro side and the regular side people get way too caught up in the little itty bitty things right um but then i hear like yeah you know i was i rolled for you know 30 minutes and got a back massage, but then I slept for five hours last night. And I'm like, yeah, you're going to get hurt, right? Like you're not going to recover. So sleep is the number one thing. Right. Um, and then number two, like the obvious thing is just your, your, your nutrition and your hydration, right? Like just making sure you're, you're getting healthy foods, a good mixture of carbs, proteins, and fats, um, getting enough, enough water, enough electrolytes, um, getting just simply enough calories in right like i think a lot of people don't realize how much more you do need to eat when you're kind of training hard for something um and then you know often just making sure that where you're on top of like things like your vitamin d and your iron and some stuff that are in supplements as well that's probably one of the biggest things from from me like i'll 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 do a definitely a weight session a day or a class a day at the gym and and mm -hmm. then either got our run and I, I definitely probably not well, it's always been this case and I, I probably don't I need to get smarter but don't eat enough um to refuel mm -hmm. run on mm -hmm. and um and then yeah so that and then sleep do you know what I mean um I mean I'm probably getting mm -hmm. I'm getting six it's it's a good day with with three kids it's, you know what I mean it's it's going well with uh with six hours but I think that's probably something I need to prioritize as well um He's just somehow mm -hmm. trying to get better sleep because I know when when I am fueled enough, like I, I ran uh, a couple of weeks ago, it was one of the in, uh, threshold sessions. I think it was one point six k's on repeats or something like that, and I was fucking horrible. Like I was so mm -hmm. far off. I was a good like ten seconds off where I need to be, and mm -hmm. it was purely because I was just like I ran on an empty stomach and I was hungry from the day before, and I just was I had mm -hmm. nothing. And um, I know the difference where I, I eat and I'm fueled enough that I. I'm much better. Um, mm -hmm. So that's something I definitely got to prioritize in. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I, I, I mean, to recap the whole thing, I'm uh, again, thank you for, for coming on. Uh, I'm really looking forward to, I've really enjoyed the program. As I said, I'm someone who loves to stick to a structure and have certain times to hit for each one. And, and, and having that with mm -hmm. my sort of two quality workouts has been, been good fun because I'm always sort of playing mind games of, do you know what I mean? You got to stay on this style. Mm -hmm. I watch way too much. I'm like, do you know what I mean? When I do it, all my sort of runs, is constantly looking, trying to make sure I'm hitting that time and um, sort of playing those games. So I'm looking forward to seeing how I go in, in do you know what I mean? Five weeks or whatever it is, a 12 week block. And again, we'll give it our best shot possible. And then we'll sort of see what happens after that in terms of what distance we go for, if we hit it. Um, and, um, mm -hmm. But yeah, no, again, thank you for coming on. Um, and uh, yeah, if anyone wants to get their own individual sort of program to hit you or McCurdy training up um, and um, mm -hmm. heaps of coaches there that are able to help them out, if it's not you, um, but they've been great. And uh, I mean, it's all about having an individual program as you 
would well aware that I mean all these and all these programming is is done off my time. It's the same thing when we go to the track on a Friday, like I'm saying, we're going to run 800. I'm going. I'm, do you know I mean I'm running at 355. Do you know I mean and everyone else is running whatever they're running. So it's it's all individually based. Um, but it's I think if, if you if you're training for something, you you need a you need a coach who can put those numbers in front of you to hit. And um, again, mm -hmm. there's, there's there's no better than yourself and McCurdy training. So make sure. Again, anyone out there looking to get individual program to hit Jack up. And, um, yeah, again, thanks for taking your time all the way in Arizona and uh, looking forward to hitting our times in the next sort of couple of weeks. Absolutely. Thanks for having me on, Dylan. No worries. Thanks, mate. I hope you enjoyed our chat with uh, Coach Jack from McCurdy Training. I want to take you through this week's program and uh, I hope you uh, are going out there and getting it, win the day, and let's uh, smash our PBs together. Let's go.